head or for your low back. And YouTube and welcome back to another carport lifting vlog. Happy May. It is officially May, which is exciting that another month of quarantine is down. I have made some upgrades to the carport, so I am going to show all the upgrades that I have done since my last vlog. But since my last vlog of the heavy snatch, I know I posted my oh 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 okay push back there you go oh. okay i know i posted my road trip vlog a week ago because i had some gopro footage but since my last vlog i took two weeks off i know in a couple of these videos i have mentioned my finger that was jammed it's still pretty like bruised i don't know if you can see on the video Let's see. there we go you can see it's kind of bruised. It's definitely getting better, but it's not like healed. So I tried to give it two weeks off after my recovery week. But I am starting another 12 week program. So this is week one of this 12 week program I'm running. Obviously there's no meets to prepare for and I don't really feel like doing the online qualifier. Um, the online qualifier is qualifying for like the AO series I already qualified for and I'm obviously not strong enough to qualify for nationals so really there's no point in me doing an online qualifier at this point. I still need to learn how to snatch but I kind of have a good feeling about this cycle because I'm going to really work to make it right when it's light. I have it written up on my whiteboard up there but I'm gonna to try to really focus on the little things this cycle. I actually figured out how to do a snatch deadlift on Monday, which sounds really weird to say a snatch deadlift, but I was honestly like, my hips were rising too fast anytime I've done them before. And I actually had a breakthrough of my hips and shoulders rising at the same time. I know it sounds stupid, but I think it was a little of a breakthrough. Um. Today is a clean workout, so it's how this, these programs work. They're endurance phases, strength phases, power phases, and they're run at like four weeks at a time. So I'll do endurance for four weeks, move to strength for four weeks, and so forth. So usually it'll start off with like more general movements in the beginning, like instead of a split jerk it's a push press and instead of like a full clean it's from the thigh and it'll go from like the mid thigh down to the knee down to the floor so that's kind of how the program progresses <clears throat> my primer of the day is a controlled clean shrug from the mid thigh then i have clean from mid thigh i have two power and two full with a front squat and then i have eights on back squats I have dips, which I don't know if I can do dips. I'll try to do dips with my hand off like something in here. And then weighted planks. So again, it's a very like general workout where it starts off with lots of reps. Since I took the two weeks off, I am normally really sore when I start these endurance phases, but I'm extra sore. So I've been trying to stretch and foam roll and not being able to see like my massage therapist has really thrown a kink and everything. So I'm just trying to deal with like the extra soreness and tightness and working through this. So this vlog is going to be this carport clean workout. And then this afternoon I actually have a um, Zoom coming up. I, I guess you call her the team chiropractor, team, I guess like the person that helps, I don't even know what she would be considered, but we have a chiropractor and they're called the CHFP self-care seminars. So on this quarantine every Friday, I guess it's kind of like a happy hour, we've been going over different parts of the body and different exercises to do for mobility, stability if you're feeling pain and stuff like that. So 
Today we are actually covering hips and pelvic floor, which I know I've mentioned in my videos, I had a lot of hip issues in the past, which thankfully working with my great PT, I have been able to fix. So I'm actually curious to see what the Zoom is today. So this intro is getting a little longer, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the upgrades that I have made to the carport and then I'm gonna get warmed up for my workout, so. Okay, since the last lifting vlog, I know I talked about it in a couple vlogs ago, but I actually ended up making a full platform. I know I said in the video a couple videos back that I didn't want to build a full platform because it was heavy and in case I had to move it, but at this point, being two months at home, I kind of just had to bite the bullet and go ahead and set one up. It was actually really easy to build put all these screws in myself actually came out really good nice oak board nice and sturdy horse stall mats were really hard to find to get the rest of them but i put a layer underneath it Let's see we made a plate holder which came out nice to hold the plates i moved the extra horse stall mats and wood on the squat rack with the crossover symmetry so this is kind of like my jerk squat station hung up a couple flags hung up the maryland flag hung up the adopt your beach flag my little baby kilo plates are still in there because i didn't trust putting them in there yet i like i talked about i hung up a whiteboard that i've been writing little notes on which have really helped and hung up these sweet little lights that way there's some light in here but it actually came out really nice and I've really enjoyed lifting out here so had to give a little update of the carport lifting situation and yeah that's about it Thank <laughs> you. 
Mishka. Well, that was fun. I was supposed to go up to 54 kilos and I only got to about 50 kilos before everything started breaking down. My finger was not pleased with these mid-thigh cleans. Usually on Monday I had snatches from the mid-thigh and I was able to use straps and I can't use straps for cleans so I have to rely more on my grip but I decided to stay at 50 to have better movement patterns and at least those last two sets I started to move a little better. I wasn't finishing my pull enough so I was jumping a little forward so once I saw that on the videos I was able to correct that a little bit but I'm gonna go ahead and move on now. I didn't know it was supposed to be this hot and humid. I am literally glistening. It's great but I'm gonna go ahead and move on. dips and planks and I'm gonna go ahead and get stretched out before the zoom self-care session that I mentioned earlier in the vlog I don't know how much of a zoom session I'm gonna be able to actually vlog but I'm gonna try to get at least a couple clips of the seminar like I said it's on the hips and the pelvic floor so I'm interested to see at least like the hips what she's gonna say about that Sometimes we stretch together, sometimes we just talk and ask questions, but I'm gonna go ahead and like I said, get ready for that. And then yeah. Um, so we're gonna talk about all of the muscles in the front, the back, and the sides of the hips. And then the bottom of the hips where the pelvic floor is located. We're gonna go over some self myofascial release techniques using a foam roller and a lacrosse ball. And um, you can always show me or send me videos of y'all being creative with the stuff that you're releasing your muscles with. Um, we're gonna go over some warm up exercises that include mobility and stability for the hips. Um, some of these are going to be repeat exercises, but with our attention on different structures of the body. You know what that means? We're doing rear foot elevated split squats again. Um, and then we're going to end it with a pelvic floor relaxation um, meditation that I'm going to walk you all through. So it's going to be a blast. A lot of issues that I see 
when patients come in with posterior hip pain um, is these muscles have been overworked. Some other ways that they can get overworked is by um, faulty movement patterns um, that are accumulating outside of the gym. So like if they're going on hour long walks with their dog every day, um, but the uh, sidewalk is uneven. So they're always putting uneven stress over and over and over on, on one hip versus the other. Um, that's just one example. There are limitless ways that we can mess up our body, um, but being creative with figuring out um, what you or your client or your patient are doing in their daily activities that could lead to um, some overuse entropy of these muscles over here. If we're doing a large volume block and we've got five by tens of everything and these muscles around here are getting really inflamed and we're not um, icing or massaging our tailbone because nobody told us to, um, we can start to get some inflammation and irritation in that area right there. Um, and if left unchecked, it can actually lead to some pretty big, big pelvic floor issues. So we'll get to that in a sec. Um, leaking with exercise is not normal. It's common, but it is not normal. So if you are leaking on the platform or leaking with squats, um, or when you're sneezing or laughing, talk to me. There's a lot of stuff that we can do to retrain those muscles to work um, optimally. But that is gonna go ahead and conclude this lifting vlog self -care conclude this vlog and I not sure wit mm. there is a lot going on right now and I can't keep straight of what actually is going on because every single neighbor wants to be outside right now why anyway Thanks for following me in another lifting carport adventure. I'm not sure what my next lift will be, but I will most certainly keep uploading as much as I can. So again, see you in the next one.